your life and love to set me free. Giving your life and love to set me free. Giving your life and love to set me free. every soul to experience your freedom again this morning freedom to live the life of the spirit freedom to hear you freedom to see you freedom to love you set us free from the bondage of our natural senses and help us to ascend the spirit Holy Spirit we will wait upon you this morning for your feeling once again that once again you would feed us up once again, you will stir up our hearts. Once again, you would awaken us unto righteousness. Once again, once again, you will breathe upon us. Father, I rely upon your spirit this morning. I have no words of my own. For you alone have the words of life. What have you said? The words that you speak, they are spirit and they are life. And so, Father, I depend upon you solely this morning to speak your words to your people. Words that will bring edification. Words that will bring exhortation. Words that will cause our soul 
to ascend in life. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, you have prayed. Good morning, church. Can you give the person seated next to you and say, welcome to the meeting of the church. So, ask how did your week go? Just, um, farms the person for like um, one minute, you know. If you don't know the person's name, ask the person's name. If the person has not been coming to church, ask the person, where have you been? I've not been seeing you in church. Where have you been? Amen. Yeah, so this morning I'm really um, believing God for grace to... Um, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. The opening. It's opening. It's opening. It's opening. I will open it. I will open it and I will make it clear. I will make it clear. It's a grace for elucidation. It's a grace to elucidate. It's a grace to make it clear. It's a grace to simplify. It's a grace to simplify. It's a grace to simplify. It's a grace to simplify instructions. It's a grace to break down instructions into simple day-to-day -day application. It's a grace to break down oh, instructions to daily routine. It's a grace to break down instruction. Instruction to steps, 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 steps. Steps that will even take you to the heavens. Step that will take you to the heavens. I will pray, I will make it like a ladder that will come to you. And you will see the steps. You take it daily. You take it daily. You take it daily. Daily. Daily instructions unto spiritual. Daily instructions that will make one spiritual. Daily instructions that will make one spiritual. Daily instructions for growth. Daily instructions that will culminate into growth. Daily instructions that will culminate into growth will be made clear, will be given, will be spelt out, will be given, will be spelt out. And grace will be given alongside to stay with the instructions. See the Lord. Amen. Can we just lift up our hands and thank the Father for the wisdom he's bringing to us in this season. Um, you know, I'm not just saying this just to say it. I really want you to do it. I want you to thank the Father for the wisdom, you know, to come into um, the life of the spirit, life of the supernatural. The Father has... Embrace this teaching to grant us wisdom, practical ways of assessing these things. Can you just lift up your hands and thank the Father for that wisdom, that grace, you know, that grace that is bringing upon us as a people in this season, that grace that is bringing, that, that line by line, that precept by precept that is bringing to us as a house, you know, in this season. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We receive that grace. We receive that word. We receive.
Leave it, it's not Jesus. In Jesus' name, you have prayed. So, um, before I go into the word, I want to appreciate Pastor. Can we all appreciate our senior pastor? Thank you, Pastor, for your labor over this assembly, for your labor in the world, and also indeed, I also want to um, appreciate all the other pastors, the associate pastors, Pastor Friday, Pastor CG, Pastor Dio, Pastor GP, Pastor Nisimus. Thank you for your labor in the house and all the SLTs, all our unit leaders. Um, I appreciate you this morning for joining forces with heaven to labor in the Lord's even yard. So this morning we'll be going ahead with um, the topic we started last week, the supernatural life. And um, you know, this is a burden that the Lord laid in the heart of our pastor, and I believe that it's something that as an assembly that we need. It is a, it is a very important ingredient that we need as a believer. And one of the things I found out about this is that if this thing is not installed, if it's not properly installed, it's actually going to affect our work with the Lord. As we won't be able to, we won't be able to, you know, this question works circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. You know, there is certain kind of work in the spirit that we will not be able to do. You know, if these things are not, and I believe that for some of God, these are deficits in our foundations or things that are already eroding away that the Lord is trying to install. And I don't even think it's just only foundation. It's certain things that is part of the things that we need to carry all through, you know, our journey as a believer. And I remember when Mom Yelly came, you know, she was saying something. She said, the world is becoming more terrible, that you cannot afford not to be spiritual, you know. And when she was talking about that spiritual, not afford to be living in the spirit, not, not, you cannot afford not to, you know, have the supernatural, you know, you know, because um, life is not as straightforward as we used to think. And it's not as simple as, you know, as we need to, we need to think. So we need that, we need, and I believe God is giving us that wisdom so that in this season, we can actually work you know, our work, you know, so that our work can, can actually work, you know, in wisdom and be able to, you know, um, live the life that the Lord has ordained for us. So this morning we'll continue. I want to appreciate Pastor Friday for starting last week and laying a very good foundation for us last week. So I'll just be building on some of those things he has said and some of the thoughts that is actually in God's heart. So most of the things we'll be looking at this morning, we'll be looking at the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, just like an overview. Because I believe that the Acts of Apostles actually, that the early chapters actually depict a picture of a supernatural church, a supernatural assembly. And you know, um, when we talk about the supernatural, you know, the supernatural has been so bastardized that when you hear supernatural, you're thinking of Superman. That's what comes to our mind, you know. All those Superman things, you know, but now in a more spiritual, um, in a more spiritual branding. That's what first, maybe you hear supernatural, there's something, you know, just think about it, there's something that comes to your mind. So, for example, we don't see working in love as supernatural. People don't consider working in love towards your brethren as supernatural. You know, the truth of the matter is that a natural man cannot work in love. Because God is love. In natural man, there are certain things that we have been taught about working in love, you know, about how to relate to one another. A natural man cannot do those things. It takes you being supernatural, you know, beyond the natural to be able to keep some of those commandments that the Lord is giving us in this. But, you know, because once the icon supernatural is clicked, it generates a lot of things, you know, most of the things it generates are the spectacular. That is most of the things that usually comes to our mind. The spectacular, you know, walking through the walls, doing miracles. Well, it's part of all those things, you know, but it is, that is not the entire um, definition of what it means to be supernatural. Being supernatural is actually a life. It is not something that happens once in a while. Yeah. Why did I say Are you, are you feeling cold? What did I say? Being supernatural is a life. Yeah, so it is a, it is a, it is, I want you to see being supernatural as a lifestyle. A lifestyle produced because of a way of life that is being taught. 
So, so for example, so really, let's 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 look at it. So, if a child, a, ch a child, when you give out to a child, if the child begins to talk, is that not a normal thing that the child is supposed to do? Is that not a normal thing the child is supposed to do? If a child begins to walk, is that not a normal thing the child is supposed to do? Yeah. So the supernatural is so that is how the supernatural is supposed to be. You know, so if your child is walking, if your child is talking, if your child grows up to a certain stage and then your child can operate a phone, can do all those things, you don't see it as it's not something that you now go and raise um, you go and call paparazzi that ah come and see you. My child can now operate a phone. Do we do all of those things? The same when it comes to the supernatural. Some of the expression of the supernatural that we see should be part of our day-to-day -day expression and should not be something that is seen as spectacular, so to say. Spectacular to us because it is part of the life that we have been called to live. What did I say? It's part of the life you have been called to live. So if you look at the Acts of the Apostles, I know, like we said, the supernatural, what produces supernatural natural life? It's the first principles of the faith. Just being, you know, the teachings, the milk of the word, is supposed to produce a kind of life. You know, we all know that our meals in the kingdom, when we get born again, our meals are ingredients. You know, we've been taught that over and over again. Our meals are in what? Gradient. Just like when you give birth to a child, you don't start a, like the baby they went to name this money now. You can't say, ah, this baby is hungry. Then you make fufu and a goosey and you give that child. That child is going to, that child, the, the, that child's intestines are not matured enough to do what? To handle it. Even if you make it into water, it cannot handle it. You know, that child has to be fed with milk. You know, part of that, what that milk will do is that that milk will make, is, going to is going to provide all the nutrients that is needed for that child at that stage. In fact, it is that milk that will even mature that intestine to grow to a state that it can, it can undo the next phase of the diet. Are you following me? So that's the same thing with the milk of the world. The milk of, you know, that, you know that, that's, that milk that the ba baby is taking, the milk that you, when you give a child, you start giving that child a milk. The milk, the child begins to grow. And then you begin to see the child begin to do certain things. The child begins to giggle. The child begins to increase in, you know, you will notice the child will grow, the cheeks will start coming out. After a while, the child will start smiling. You know, you start seeing certain things. It is that food that that child is eating that is making that child to grow and come into, to, and there is a kind of expression that that child has at that stage. Are you following me? I want you to follow me very well. No? And there's a kind of, of, of expression that that child has at that stage. So if you give out to a child at, that's a day one, but the child, the child is, is two months old, there are certain things you begin to see the child begin to do. The child won't even be sleeping when they first give back to them, they can spend 24 hours sleeping. By the time they are beginning to be two months, they are more awake, you know. They begin to react to lights. They begin to do all of those things. You see them giggle. You see them smile more, you know. Smiling that is social. We call it social smile. When you first give back, a child can smile, but it's not social smile. Maybe they are seeing angels. That's, but the social one, the social smile is that. When you, it's in response to you, maybe you do something, you know, just like God, now if you... See, if you smile too much to God, but she will, he will smile back. No, that is a social smile. But of course, when it's on maybe day one, you could have seen him some, sometimes even without anything. Just do, that, just do like this. You know, that one is not a social smile. But you know, as he begins to grow, there are certain things that he begins to pick up, that he begins to express naturally because he is growing and there is something that is making him to grow. So that's the same thing with the milk. You see, the milk, when you feed on the milk of the word of God, there is a kind of life it produces. It produces, and it's just, you know, when uh, God God is doing that, we don't go and take drums, drum sets and then begin to drum. We expect him to do that because of what he is feeding on, because he is growing. So that's the same thing. When we get born again and we start feeding on the milk of the world, there are certain things that the milk will do to us, certain kind of life that it will become part of us. It will also mature our internal organs to be able to undo the next stage of life. 
How many of you are following me? And you see, why you cannot say, oh, the baby, we have grown, we have passed that week. No, let me now tell you something. Those things that happen in the first formation of the years of a child actually depends a whole lot of things in your entire lifetime. So, for example, a child at the, at the doctor, you know, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong. When a child is growing, those, those initial years, if the child doesn't eat well, eat the right set of food, the brain is not going to be developed well. Yeah. Are you following me? Yes. The brain, the brain, the brain is not going to be developed well. And that would affect a whole lot of things. That kind of like, sometimes my guy will say, because of certain things that are happened at the at that initial stage. So there are certain things, that, and what he's trying to say is that that child's intellectual capacity has been affected or because of certain things that happened at that early phase. What does that mean? Our feeding, feeding on the milk of the world, as, we, as much as we see it as if it is basic, it affects how we undo every other gradient of meal that the Lord brings to us. So there's a way it makes us handle it. If you are not well developed well with the milk, our spiritual digestive system might not be able to handle well, you know, other higher gradients of milk. And so that is why it's not something that we just, just let me and then you just leave. It is actually part of our life. It is part of the all the all the milk that uh, God will be take now. Everything that the milk has done now is something is going to take true that will always be with him in the face of his life. If there is something now, if he doesn't feed well and then he has infections, maybe he doesn't feed well now and then he has some infections and some infections maybe lead to certain kind of diseases that affect certain part of his brain or his body. It will show subsequently in his growth. So that is why this supernatural life is not something that we just learn and we just live. It has to be part of our walk. It is part of our expression as we grow in the things of God. And so it is not learn and drop. Tell your neighbor, say it's not learn and drop. Say it is part of our life. So I just, I just, I just took that to just explain so that we can understand. So the, what the make of the world does is that it produces a kind of life. And that kind of life it produces is what we can call a supernatural life. I know you can break it into the supernatural. That is, it is a life that is above the natural. So there is a way natural men, mere men live. But as you begin to learn the way of Jesus... As you begin to learn the name of Jesus, there is a particular kind of life you learn that makes you above natural. Say, above natural. above natural. And after you have learned that supernatural life, there's still another meal, Christ, that makes us also what? Spiritual. Are you, are, you, are you following me? And then we learn the next whatever, and then and it makes us divine. So they are all ingredients. But this is like something that we carry. So it's not as if you learn Christ now. And then when you are going to the next phase, you drop it. All of those things are part of what? Our growth and what? And our development. So it's just like the same thing also. If you eat a bad food. So you can grow well as a child. Maybe you have grown well to your, to your, um, what call it? To your teen, teen years, and then you have become an adult. And I know, you know now there's austerity, all the pepper in the market. Like I used to tell people, you know, all these uh, pepper, all those uh, bad pepper. But they have, you know, that uh, conquers in them that they have been linked to cancer. So imagine that all your life, or maybe you are someone that likes suya, you eat suya, suya, suya every day. There is something inside smoke that causes stomach cancer. So, you know, and you eat it over time. People, so you see that when people develop cancer, they will now look back. Maybe when they are in 60, they're just asking them question. What have you been eating? Maybe you have stomach cancer. Say, do you really like eating smoked fish, smoked um, food, smoked all these things, and all that? They say, eh, eh, I, I used to do this. You know, what I'm trying to say, what that person has had over time has that led to something. The same thing also. So what I'm trying to say is that what you eat, as in what you feed on, becomes part of you. It's supposed to be part of you from one phase into what? The next. So that's why if you have not 
if the milk of Christ, if, 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 if the milk of the world, you have not really mastered it, it will affect every other face of your life. You know, you can cross to the other side, you know, but you will, if, the, if that deficit is still there, there will still be something about your work, about your faith that will not be solid. That you will not be solidly grounded. And I believe that this time that we are emphasizing a lot of building, I believe the Lord is bringing this so that there are things that the Lord wants to put in us that will make us solid believers. That cannot be moved. Amen. So I just use that to explain so that we can understand, so that we know that it is not learn and what? Drop. It, this should be something that every one of us should desire to be part of our what? Daily living. So we'll see in the in the, in, the, in, the, in the Acts of the Apostles, you know, in Acts chapter 1, we will see them, the Lord give them the promise that they should tarry, you know, in Jerusalem until the Spirit is put upon them. And we see that, you know, actually happen. As they said, as they gathered together in one accord, the Holy Spirit actually came upon them, you know. And then, so when the day of the Pentecost was fully come, chapter after chapter 2, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Verse 3. Then appeared of them divided tongues as of fire. And one sat upon each of them. Verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Because of time. I'm going to paraphrase many of the things I'm going to be seeing. So we see the infilling of the Spirit come to them. And of course, we can say that on this particular day, you know, maybe officially, the New Testament church was actually batted. You know, because they were in Hakkoden, the Spirit came. And then, you know, one of the spectacular, I want you to know that, you see, the Spirit, the, our, our churches are supposed to be actually Holy Spirit churches. What did I say? I'm not saying spooky churches, and I'm going to show you. They're supposed to be ghosted churches. And you will see, see, you see, that, that, that this singular experience changed a whole lot of things about the early believers. And so you will see Peter. Peter used to be a very timid person. You will see Peter, when he was, when he was going to deny Jesus, he was just a young girl that made Peter do what? Deny Jesus. That questioned him. And when he questioned his faith... You know, the guy just sicky, as in, he just, he was not bold enough. It was not that he did not love Jesus, but he was not, he was not bold. You know, but you will see in Acts, by Acts chapter 2, by the, by the time the Holy Spirit came upon them, you know, and people were questioning, that, look at this one, what is wrong with them? Then you see Peter, let's, let, let's read it, thank you for giving this. But Peter standing up with the eleven, raised his voice. What do you feel that could have empowered him to do that? These are people that were hiding before. You know, that infilling of the spirit brought some level of boldness. So he raised his voice and said to them, men of Judah and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known. So it was not just only speaking to the people that were there. You know, it was, say, proclamation. So there was something about that, that spirit infilling that brought a level of boldness. You know, God had told them that when the spirit comes, there will be witnesses to me. So you see, it said, let him be known to you and eat my words. Verse 15. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. And you know, Peter preached a very long message. And by the time he finished preaching, 3,000 people got converted. Why did I say? So, so because of that, I won't be able to go through all of this scripture, but take me to that scripture. Acts um, chapter 2, where from verse 41. So you see Peter preaching. He began to preach, began to preach, you know, talk about all the entire 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 scriptures. Up to this point, he was preaching. And then they said, Then those who take me, let me start from 30. So from that place where he stood up and he began to boldly declare, began to boldly declare the word of God, making God's intention, you know. Um, known to the people. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, be saved from this perverse generation. But then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. And so the church began, verse 42. And let us see. And so we will now see what... So after the birth of the church, 
there was, they were not just only preaching to people that were not, that don't yet receive Jesus. They did not just say, okay, no, they preached and 3,000 joined. But those 3,000, there was an activity that also continued. You know, because I said the church was actually better. And you see, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and what? In prayers. So you will see them. So after those, after those 3,000, in quotes, got born again, there was activities that continued. They had to continue in the apostles' doctrine. That apostles' doctrine, you can say, is apostles' teaching. Because the apostles, the Peter and the eleven, were teaching them based on the things they have learned from Jesus. In their work with Jesus, they will now begin to teach those people. And they continue. And see, it's not just only continue. Because, you see, the supernatural life is not something that they just lay hands on you. And it happens. Or something that just happens when you come for meeting. You know, ah, people go to meeting. You see people falling down on their anointing. You say, ah, that meeting was very supernatural. Ah, a lot of supernatural move. It's not, it, yes, those, we can have those expressions. But that is not what actually produces the supernatural life. It is part of it, you know. We need all those toppings. I call them toppings of the spirit. We need it. We need all those toppings. But, you see, one of the things that produced the supernatural life that we see in the book of Acts was majorly based on this. So, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. In the breaking of bread and in what? Prayers. So we see three things here. Word, fellowship, and prayer. Say word. word. Say fellowship, fellowship and prayers. And I want you to know, see, what they continued in, they did not continue. You know, remember that the Pharisees, the law, these people were Jews. Most of them were Jews. Remember that they also had their own doctrine. Doctrine of Moses. That was not what they continued in. They continued in the apostles' doctrine. That was the present revelations that were being revealed to them in that season. So they had to continue steadfastly in those things, in fellowship and in prayers. Those, those, three, so, so those three things. So if you want a supernatural life, you cannot pray with those three things. The word, fellowship with the brethren. That's the life of the brethren. And what? Prayers. What did I say? Mm -hmm. so we see that these things were the things that they continued in steadfastly let's continue verse 43 then fear came upon every soul and many so you now see you know many times we want signs and wonders but we don't want to continue in doctrine we don't want to do fellowship and we don't want to do prayers so the signs are most time when people go to acts of apostles what people go there to do is just to pick the miracles but there was something that was producing the miracles the miracles was a consequence of something. It was witnessing to something. So you can see the effect came upon them. So many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Verse 44. Now all who believed were together. So they did not just come to this place of togetherness. That's why I also believe. You see, the life of the brethren, you cannot force it. It is doctrine. We, we actually journey to that place. So from verse 42 to verse 44, I don't think it's something that happened in that same day. So they continued steadfastly in the apostle doctrine. And as they continued in fellowship, breaking of bread, prayers, they journeyed to the place where all who believed were what? Together. And did what? Had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among God as anyone had need. This is supernatural life. Say supernatural life. Supernatural. Hey, I want to see, I want you to see another dimension. So, so, so when you talk about supernatural life, when you see the life of the brethren, that is what? Supernatural life. Because it's not natural. People that you don't know. People you can sell, your parents can sell house for you to go to UK and go and do masters. But for people to sell land and for brethren to be using the money for the land to eat, it is supernatural. Why did I say? It is beyond human, natural, human word comprehension. Can you see supernatural living? Because many times you see the word supernatural, just say, ah, um, it is good. I mean, you see, and I'm not playing down on it. In fact, something we must also believe. But you see, the, even the context of the miracles, we see that the context of the miracles 
in Acts and other apostles was more of to bear witness to the word and to attract the unbelievers. And we see the issue of witnessing also, reaching out also in the Acts of the church. See, all of those things are things that if you took milk well, they should be part of you. So I tell people, evangelizing, witnessing the life of Christ, it should be something natural to you as a believer living the supernatural life. So when you, when you, when you find it difficult to express, to express your faith, you have friends. Now you are in this one. You cannot express. They don't even know if you are born again or you are not born again. You are not living a supernatural life. It is, not part, it is not part of the expression. You know, like I said, when a child is growing, a child will start doing certain things. There are certain things a child should express. Expression of our faith, witnessing to the life that we are alive is part of our supernatural life. Witnessing that life and, being, and people having convictions and being able to now say, okay, I can see what you are talking about and be convicted. We will see it. We see it in Stephen. You know, Stephen was a man full of spirit and power. He said, and as he pre 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 spirit, um, Stephen preached to a point, he said, their hearts was caught. Hallelujah. Stephen was not an apostle, but was one of the disciples that was erased with this over time. And so that's why, you know, we, we used to say that in the New Testament, the people that will do the work of the ministry are actually the saints. So you are being equipped from the pulpit to actually do what? Do the work of ministry. So you say, I don't, I don't want to do ministry. You don't understand. Part of, your, part of your supernatural living is to be witnessing the life of Christ. I don't mean to say witnessing. I'm witnessing it by living. No. You will witness it by living and you witness it by what? I can't hear you. And you witness it by what? Preaching. So that's what so, so that's we see. When, when, so that, that's I know that you know when we see an assembly that is ghosted, you will see the people on fire. Yeah, hallelujah. They are very, they are, they are, they are very, they are excited to share their faith. They are passionate. They are passionate about what they believe, and they are excited about doing what about sharing it with others. So, so the 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 the, the so they continued in the apostles' doctrine. The, that, that thing produced a life. I'm just showing you the supernatural. One of the things it produced, I brought them to a place where they were all together as one. And then it did not stop there. One of the things I also want us to see is that after the, about when the Spirit came, Peter preached the word with boldness. They continued steadfastly. And let's look at verse 41. 40, verse 47. They did not just, and you, see, you will see that there was, let's, let's go to 46, we've done 45. So continuing daily. So you know, not initially we saw continuing steadfastly. Continuing steadfastly brought them to a place where they became together as what? As one. Then, they, so they did not even stop there. So, so continuing daily with what? One accord in the temple and doing what? Breaking bread from house to house. They ate their food reward, gladness and simplicity of heart. Verse 47. Praising God. Can you see? And having favor with what? All people. That's another, that's natural. So you will see that the, 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 the life that they began to live began to even express to the way people treated them. So you see people in church, you say, today we are doing, we are going to pray for um, no, some of the services we do. Uh, 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 I forgot, I know it's been long, but how do you call it? Uh, abnormal favor. Unmerited favor. Now somebody that does not know you today, he's going to, blah, blah, blah. No, all those strings, all those things really, really, no, all those things really, God can actually do it. But one of the ways to guarantee those things is, when you continue in the word. Yeah. Said, said, when the ways of a man pleases the Lord, he even makes his enemies to war. Yeah. So there is some, not, not the same thing happened to Jesus. Said Jesus grew in stature, in favor before with God and God with men. 
So there's something about the supernatural life that just brings you into a life of favor. And you begin to see lines falling to you, what, in pleasant places. But you see, we, that's why the, what we should be focusing on is, oh God, I want the favor, I want the favor. We should look at what is producing that thing. There is something producing it. Continuing in doctrine, fellowship with the brethren, prayer, all of these things brings us to a place of stature. And then we begin to have favor with God and what? With me. So just try to point to you this. Special kind. So I just want you to, you know, I want you to just try and imagine that kind of a church in the early church. So as they began to learn, they were being taught by the apostles. They were being taught how to live, taught how to have faith in the Lord, how to love one another. Things began to happen. You know, things, things about their life began to change. And not, not just only change internally, also affected, you know, things around them. Amen. Amen. So they continued daily in one accord. And like I said, they were witnessing the world. So now let's go to Acts chapter 3. In Acts chapter 3, you will see Peter and the apostles, they kept, you know, preaching the word. And because of time, I wanted, us to, I wanted us to go through this old chapter, but I want us to. But they began to preach the word. And when they began to preach the word, as they, you know, in that, in that chapter 3, that was where they met the man at the beautiful gate. And it was a Sabbath, you know, that generated a lot of controversy. And the people were, the Pharisees were, um, were agitated that we gave them the authority to do that. And after that, they forbade them that they should not speak about. Jesus anymore. Remember that this same, I want you to give the context. Remember that this was the same, the same people that killed Jesus. You don't understand. These are the same people that killed the Jesus they were preaching about. Now they are preaching about him and those same people began to threaten them. So that means that those people also had the same ability to do the things they did to Jesus to them. You don't understand. Let me give you a, a, let me give you a, 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 a scenario you can, you can relate with. You are working in a place of work. Your boss sacked somebody because somebody was doing something. Sacked the person, life and direct, and the person left. Then you, you are now coming again. You are now doing the same thing. And the boss is threatening you. You know that, what, what first thing that will come into your mind is that <laughs> this same boss... This same boss, if you do what? Sack me. So I want you to see the concept that what would have been going through the minds of the apostles. That they said they should not. No matter where we read it, we just read it. So when they told them not to speak again, they wrote that. <laughs> if that, you know, something be telling them, like, hey, so Bashara, what happened to Jesus? Is the same thing that will happen to you. But you know what happened? Something happened. I want, you to show, I want to show you something that happened. Let's look at Acts chapter 2, verse 41. So let's read this one for so that I can understand. So when they had further threatened them, maybe you should go backwards a bit. Let's look at verse 19 so that you can understand the, 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 the context. Verse 19. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them and said, today, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. So what can be giving them that kind of boldness? Say ghosted believers. So there was something that had come upon them. They no longer feared. Verse 20, let's continue. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Verse 21. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people, since they all glorified God for what had been done. Now let's go to verse um, 41 to 47. I'm coming. Let me check if that's where we should. I want, because of that, I want us to jump some scriptures. So, yeah. So, let's go to verse 
13. I think we jumped before verse 13. Let's go to verse 13. Um, sorry, let's go to verse 8. So we've seen them being threatened, but in verse 8 again, in, verse, in chapter 4 again, we see the Sadducees, and if, because of time, we'd have read through, you know, but you see in chapter 4 again, as they preached and did all of those things, the Pharisees began to threaten them. And then, but before Peter could face the, remember that, like I said, these are the people that killed Jesus. Something happened. And that was what I want to show you. Verse eight. Then Peter, being filled with what the Holy Spirit said to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you all. So we see. Peter, that, remember, this Peter used to be a very timid person. That a, a small guy shallowed. When we shall wear, no. Now, be filled with the Spirit. You will see him boldly declaring the word. Even in the midst of opposition, when there were contradictions that they should not preach again, you will see him begin to boldly declare. Let's look at verse 13. Hallelujah. This is this verse 13. I want us to just now when they saw that when they saw so you see see what happened so now after he, be, he preached now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated so I, I don't know why they knew that they were maybe the way they were speaking maybe their English was not really I don't know but there was something they said that the fact that they are not they are not really educated people but they know that they had that they were bold and they, and untrained men they did what. They marveled. So the father that how can people be this bold, boldly proclaiming the word? Despite because people that have sort things are people like Saul. Yeah. That were trained, you know, that were Pharisees, Pharisee of Pharisees, you know, those kind of stuff. But there was something about them that they saw that marveled them. And they realized that they had been what? Being with Jesus. So, the, so, so I'm just trying to show you what the supernatural life produces a level of boldness. So I tell people, so let's, let's bring it into a particular way. So when people cannot stand for their faith, there is something wrong with your milk. Basic faith. In the house, they say, come and go to one baba to come and do something. They say, I'm not going. They say, come and take one soup. You're having a headache. Your mommy say you're going somewhere to collect one soup, one token. And then, you know, you're now coming to meet me and asking me that should you use it? I know there's something wrong with your because that one, that one, if you have, there are certain things that your, your learning of Jesus, not even Christ now, should give you some level of boldness to be able to, to resist some things. Are you following me? Because yes, I want you to know, so, so when some of you come and you come to them some, something, you just might come, all this one, when we are at meek level, we have already sorted those ones out. Somebody that's picking ones, but I'm forcing ones banned on you. All those ones are not things that your, your work with the Lord, because of your work with the Lord, should, even at the initial stage, should be able to sort out certain things. Are you, are you following me? Yes, Says the supernatural life. Yes, I'm not trying to paint some of those things. So in your place of work, they tell you to change their, they don't feel the right time they come to work. You see, that, you know, because I've seen people do that boldness to stand against such things. Say supernatural life. I want you to know because many times you see when people think of supernatural, they don't have to people think of Superman. They don't think about all these things, standing for integrity, yeah. speaking the truth, being bold to stand by what you believe and say, Sir, I am a believer. I don't do these things. I am a believer. So there was something, so, but you know, for you to be able to do some of those things, you need this feeling of the spirit. The milk does start. There's always this, there's something it produces in you. It produces a conviction. It produces a boldness to stand by what you believe, even in the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
So let's look at, we've looked at verse 13. I want us to look at um, verse 41 to 47 of this same Acts. You have been reading one for time. I've really read through it and see um, how things really, how things really played out. But it's something, it, 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 during this teaching, it's good for you to read Acts, to just familiarize you with and see what the supernatural life in the early church actually looks like. And so, when, after Peter had preached all the messages, he preached um, uh, all the messages, and then, of course, they threatened them and all that. And then in verse 23, they let them go. So when they let them go, so they now let them go. When they left them, because the Pharisees took them, they were thinking of how to punish them, but then eventually they could not do anything, then they let them go. And see what happens. And this is where I want us to see also. And being let go, they went to their own what? No, you've talked about them being on a call. So they had their own company. So there is one thing milk does for you. Milk gives you a family. So milk, learning the basic principles of the world, should produce a family life. Why did I say? It produces a family life. There's something about you that you can no longer be yourself. You don't understand. You can no longer be me and me alone. It gives you a company. It gives you a brother. And it gives you a sister. That you are not joined by biological blood. But you are joined by wanting to do the will of God. So you begin to find a sister. You begin to find a brother in those people that you are hearing the word together. So one of the ways, let me tell you something. One of the litmus tests that I know that you are doing well. That you are growing well. You know, when we see children growing well, we know. You will see their cheeks. I'll be, I'll be doctor. You see their cheeks when they come to the clinic. When they are drinking milk well, you will see them. We call it fat pad. They have this fat pad. It's in we we be as if there's puff puff. Yeah. <laughs> so when you see a, a baby, a child that is growing well, a child that is sucking milk well, she will have that thing. Yeah. If that child is not having it, even if the child is a slim one the child should have a little one, you just see it. Then their skin is always fresh to look like freshly baked cake. Yeah, that's how a child taking milk well, they, that's how they will look before they start eating adult food the first six months. So, one of the things I will know one of the ways to know that you are, you are learning, you've learned the basic principles well is that you begin to have companions among the brethren. It's part of the supernatural life. You have companions. You have people that have become, that are your, they are, you, you have started the journey of being your sister. It's not sister, sister affair that we all do in church. It's not just sister affair. Sister, they are beginning to find a sister. And you are beginning to find a brother. Among those of you that are hearing the word. So if you are, Always having problems with everybody. You have been hearing, hearing this word and you have not found a sister or a brother. You need to check your... There's something wrong somewhere. Why did I say? And you see, when they returned, they did not return to their biological family. Do you know that Peter had family members? They returned back to their world on, say on. So the brethren, the brethren life had already become their home. You know, some of you, when you have problem, the first person you call, bams, well, you, you to ask yourself, if I have any issue, who is the first person I call? Some of you is your mommy. <laughs> mommy! <laughs> because they were, you know, were threatening them, and they were, were these same people, the people that killed us, I gave you the context, that people could kill, they killed Jesus. So those people can also they can also kill them. You don't understand. But imagine when that thing happened, they returned back to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders, no, remember this is same chief priests that killed Jesus, all that they had said to them. Verse for the next verse. So when they heard that, what did they do? They raised their voice to God with one accord. And said, Lord, you are God, who made heaven and earth. So, 
Remember, remember, they could not just come to this place where they could raise their voice. They had continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in the fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and pray. So it wasn't this day they started praying. So they had been what? Pray. Why did I say they had been what? So prayers, being cultured with the word, being cultured with prayers had brought them to this place. So they raised their voice and they prayed. Verse 25. No, let, 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 let's move. No, And they prayed. I don't want us to um, do all the prayers. Can you now tell me to place where? Uh, and when they had prayed, so they prayed. When they had prayed, the place where they were what? Assembled. Together was what? You see, that's why when you come for prayer meeting, we should not be joking with prayer meeting. These are things that should be happening in our prayer meeting. The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous. When two or three people... Got, so that's why some of you that come to prayer meeting and you come and you're just... You're doing it so that your unity there, you know, but there's something wrong with you somewhere. You know, when you're beginning to... When you're having fever, if your body is hot a bit, you like you have any malaria. When you see that, when you come for prayer meeting, you don't pray with one accord with us. You know that there is something wrong. Being cultured, you know, being cultured with the milk of the word should produce, we produce this. You'll be able to pray together as one. Said, And they were all what? Filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with word boldness. Imagine that these were people that they have been stopped. So even though I know that those the people threatened them, when they threatened them, I'm sure there was something that could have happened to them. Some or a little bit of fear could have also entered them. And that's why they returned back to their company. And by the time they prayed, something happened. They were topped up again. Say top up. Top up. I can't hear you say top up. top up. So when you are coming to prayer meeting, you know that it is an avenue to be what? Top top. To be filled with the spirit. So when you are coming, maybe by the time you are here on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, by Sunday, you are at a Monday, something happened at work, they have deflated you. You need to come on Tuesday to come and do what? I can't hear you. Just come and do what? So when you are coming, you are feeling that, just say, ah, let me shake up. I need to be topped up. Because there are situations and circumstances of life that are always threatening us not to walk in this way. So one of the ways to overcome daily, so if I always discourage, one of the ways to daily overcome discouragement, things that pull you down, you need continual top up in the spirit. Set up up in the spirit. And so when we come, we know that when we come, when we pray, we get energized. We must know what we are coming to do. Say we must know what we are coming to do. We are coming to pray. We are coming to, for, we are coming to ask for God's intervention. And we know that heaven, you see, you must know that when we come for prayer meeting, heaven responds to us. That, you know, we, we must not see prayer meeting as a religious thing. It's one of the, our activities, the, our, our weekly activities in City Gate Church. We must know that when we come to pray, that heaven does what? Responds to us. And they fill us up. And so we get what? And that's one of the reasons why you should not be missing meetings. If you are, if you are used to meeting, missing meetings, see, I'm being very practical with you. If you miss meetings regularly, you only do Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I want to tell you, the supernatural life will be far from you. You need, you need to continue daily. In what? You can say, I'm praying in my house. I am doing whatever. There is a different kind of power that is generated when we assemble together. The apostles could as well as carry themselves. Peter and John could as well go to their room to go and pray alone. But they knew the power of the assembly of God's people. And that's one of the things that produces what grace to live what the supernatural life. You see, I'm putting on a sign so that when you are coming for prayer, you don't come. That's why you should not come to prayer and go and be wasting your time. You feel what motto? You know, transport fare is expensive now. You use transport fare to travel, to come to church. Then you come to church, you are wasting time when they are praying. Or you are not praying. Or you are thinking about something, okay, tomorrow. <laughs> In church, you are wasting your time. You are, no, you are missing the top up. Say you are missing the top up. 
So you see them, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke. What they we need to be ghosted. We want ghost, we need ghosted believers that can stand for righteousness. Yeah. Ghosted believers can stand for their convictions. So when you cannot stand for your convictions, you're always, you're always, you're always shaking or whatever, failing in the place of conviction. You need to, you need infillings. Say infillings. Say infillings. You need to be popped up, up. You need to stay, you need to be stirred up again. So, that, that, so, so that's that. Let's let's look at. So let's continue. So they prayed, and then um, now the multitude of those who believed. Can you see it again? We are of what one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things what in common. So can you can you see all this oneness, oneness, one accord, one accord? Can you see it finding expression all through? And like I said, they did not start like this. It was the word, the fellowship, the prayers that brought them to this place. Let's continue. And with great power, the apostles did what gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was what. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked. For all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold. Verse 35. And laid them at the apostles' feet and distributed to each as anyone has need. Verse 36. Okay, next verse. So, we, so of course, we know the story. So you see that church. So this church, this for them coming to this stage, where you know they had they journeyed from just being together in one, breaking bread from house to house, and all that until they come to a place where in which they were one, they had they had their things became all things became common. It was that that Holy Ghost that produced that learning that learning of basic principles of Christ that produced this life. And then we all know the story after this issue that Ananias and Sapphira, you know, because it's, of course they saw what happened to um, Bad Nabas, you know, of course people that have praised him, that wow, so they too, they also wanted the same thing. So, we, so, that, so that's why, see, see, let me tell you, you know, some of you say, oh, the reason why I don't like burden life is because some people are not doing it, some people are taking away. Even Jesus, when Jesus gathered 12, one was Judas. Yeah. Jesus, your Lord, that knows to mo to mo to mo everything. He chose twelve. One was one was Judas. So there is no way we have believers gathered that we not have people that have issues. Even you, you get issues. So that shouldn't still that shouldn't still not deter us from living what the supernatural life. So we see him. So. They went, they also wanted to do the same thing. Then they went, they sold, we all know the story, they sold their proceeds and everything. And then they brought, then they, they, they kept part of it. And then they came to, um, they came to Peter and they presented part of it. When they came and he asked them, Peter did not say that you lied against me. To know that it was an Holy Ghost church. So said, but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan feed your heart to lie to who? So it was a ghosted assembly. And God was jealous about that. And keep back part of the price of the land for yourself. The same thing when the wife too came. That was the same thing Peter said. That you lied against the spirit. So that assembly. So now you see that that, that life you know, that common life, that life of the brethren was something, was a supernatural life produced by the work of the Spirit, Holy Spirit within that assembly. Then Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out. So you will see the Spirit judging disobedience inside this supernatural Natural assembly. And by the time we move to chapter 6, in chapter 6, we now begin to see some of the 
Because Satan also does not like this kind of life. Because this kind of life opens us to the next phase. And you will see it in Ephesians chapter 1. When Paul was praying for the Ephesians church, he said, having heard of what your faith in the Lord and your love for all the saints, you now begin to pray for the next word allocation for them. So we will see that this particular church, by the time they got to Ephesians chapter 6, they had already had a kind of the love for the saints. They already had faith in the Lord Jesus. We could see them. That's why they could speak in boldness. They could do all of those things. And you see, the enemy also, also always wants to stop people from migrating to the next phase by limiting that supernatural life in the hearts of the people. And we see that challenge in, in Acts chapter 6. When people now begin to complain that um, now in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplying. So you see that the, one of the things I also want you to know is that they did not say members. Say disciples. disciples. One of the things that a supernatural church does is that it raises disciples. So when you are a disciple, when you are a disciple, you are living a supernatural life. Because you are being disciplined by the life that is being revealed, by the things that is being taught. That is, your life is being, you know, is being regulated by the teachings that you are, that you are being read. So, you see that now when the number of disciples were multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their needles were neglected in the world daily distribution. See, before I go there, that, another thing I want to emphasize is this daily thing. Say daily thing. I can't even say daily thing. Say daily thing. So you will see that, because I told you that what produced this kind of supernatural church is they, they, they continued steadfastly. You will see then that there was daily, there was, they, said they were daily breaking bread from what? House to house. So there's something about you becoming supernatural. There is something called daily investment. Say daily investment. Daily investment. There must be daily investment. Daily investment in what? Daily investment in prayer and daily investment in fellowship of the brethren. It must be daily. Tell neighbor, say it must be daily. So for us to have the supernatural, because no many of us want or want the ghost like want we want, we want all of those things. If you don't pay attention to that, it must be a daily thing. You see, there must be a daily. A day, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how to ask it, but it would be a daily dimension to some of these activities that can make us supernatural. So you cannot afford not to give yourself to the doctrine on a daily basis. And how do you do all those things? Don't just hear it by meditating on the things that you hear, fellowshipping with the word. You know, you cannot afford not to pray. You know, praying on a daily basis. All of those things, there's something it does. It cultures the life of the spirit. It's a daily thing. Say a daily thing. It's, it's, it's a daily thing. I know, I, I, and, and so that one of the things that fans that supernatural ability to be able, you see when Mameli was, when Mameli came to talk to her, when she came for family, you see her telling that even those days when she was in school, even when she had not started any word of righteousness, you know, those, 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 are, those, are, those are the things that milk of the world we produce. They could hear God. They could hear God, they could perceive, they could know things, you know. They could, they could hear God. You see, when you're having problems, you don't know, I don't know uh, what is the will of God for me. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. There's something. Because the, the, that daily fellowship with the word, with prayer, with the brethren, it, pro, it makes you sensitive to the spirit. It allows the Holy Spirit to have a, a free flow relationship with you. It's a free flow thing. It's a free flow thing. It's a free flow. You know, one of the ways, you know, some people now in this church, if you talk, so for example, people that live in my house, if I hear their voice, even if I'm here and they're outside and I hear their voice, I know that they are the ones speaking. Why? Because I fellowship with their voice daily. So that's one of the ways. So that's one of the ways the daily thing. What that daily thing does to you is that it makes you, let me put it that way, it makes you familiar with the spirit. The spirit environment becomes very familiar with you. It is not strange. You don't stress to get there. It's not as if you now need to wind yourself and wind yourself. You need to fast and pray and all that. It becomes something familiar. It becomes your natural habitation. Say natural habitation. natural habitation. 
So hearing God, fellowshiping with the spirit, the spirit being able to nod your spirit becomes something very natural to you. No, that is not natural to the natural man. What did I say? So when that becomes natural to you, then you are super what? Natural. You're above the, natural, the natural man, ah, oh, the natural man moved. Natural men are led by their natural senses. What they see, what they hear, how they feel, how they do that. But once you begin to culture this daily thing with the Lord, you will see that it begins to, the world begins to regulate you. It will regulate your emotions. It will regulate everything about you. It just, it just regulates you. It just, you know, I said, I started, I started reading Matthew all over again. Just reading Matthew from Matthew again. I said, you know, this one is different from just studying the word, just reading the word. So I read maybe like two chapters every day for Matthew. So I read it. And I said, I said ah, wow, that it is so sweet that it just made me, some of the, even some of the scriptures that for a very long time I'd not fellowshiped with, you know, that it just, that I just enjoyed that fellowship. As I open it and I just fellowship with it. And I found out that most times during the day, when something happens, something from what I've read, you know, I see it playing out or having, or I can use, I can apply it to what is happening around me? So there's something about the daily thing, the daily fellowshipping, the daily fellowshipping with the word, praying, worshipping. You know, all of these things are things that that cultures what the supernatural life. Say the supernatural life. So it's not something that will just happen all of a sudden. There is something that produces it. Amen. Time has gone. So. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's the key to the life. The key to the life. The key to the life. Watch your daily routine. Watch your daily routine. Watch your daily routine. You, it's not a life that will just jump on you. It's your daily routine. It flows out of your daily routine. Work on your daily routine. Focus on what you do daily. Focus on daily investment. Daily investment. Daily investment. Continuity. Make it daily. Make it daily. Not weekly. Not monthly. Daily. Daily. Daily prayers. Daily interaction with the word. Daily. Daily. It's the daily thing. It's a daily thing. It's a give yourself to it. Give yourself to it. Let it become your routine. Let it become your routine. Let it become your routine. That's the key. That's the key to the life. That's the key to the life. That's the key to the life. Wake up and check your routine again. Check your routine again. Invest more in your day. Invest more in your day. That will what we communicate. That will what we, we, we culminate into life. It will produce the life. Naturally, the life will begin to flow out. So focus on your daily investments. See the law. So we must so for this supernatural um, life, this daily thing is very important. What did I say? Daily prayers. Daily study of the word, giving attention to the word, and fellowshipping with the brethren, with the saints. On the daily, they continue daily. So we cannot, that supernatural life is something that can be cultured. And the way it is cultured, just like we have heard, is by day, it's a daily investment. It's something you invest, you know. If you want to build muscles, if you want to, you see people that maybe when they started going to gym, they were thin. And then you see them say, oh, over two or three years, then you see them come up with muscles. They have daily exercised themselves. So hearing God, being familiar with God, all of these things are not things that are 
far-fetched. Having experiencing the supernatural life of boldness of of our life, witnessing to Christ, there are things that can be cultured if we give ourselves to these things. What on a daily basis, daily basis, daily basis, daily culturing the life of the spirit. So we see. So I said that. So that that daily thing, they continued daily, and that thing brought them to Acts chapter six, and of course they began to have. Um, opposition to those things. I know, like I said, I said, what brought them to that place of being one and called is the apostles' doctrine. Shaped, you know, as the as apostles were preaching, they were shaping things. They were giving them commandments, instructions that shaped their living, that brought them to that place of the life of the brethren. And then it got to a point that they now began to have issues. I call it opposition to that life. And we see it in Acts chapter 6. And then we see the disciples Rem. Let's look at Acts chapter 6. Then the church summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, so you see that now by Acts chapter 6, they have raised disciples. And not just one disciples. Look at it. Multitude of the what? So they had people. So I'm sure they had a large congregation. Some of them had migrated to the point of becoming what? Disciples. So most of the said that it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Because you know that it is that word that brought them to that place. The next verse. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of what? Good reputation. Full of what? And wisdom. Who we may appoint over this business. Verse 4. But we will give ourselves what? Continually to what? prayer and to the ministry of the word. So you see that the ministry of the word and prayer was very paramount. You know that that assembly, that supernatural prayer assembly can only survive and be sustained. Because sometimes we have we experience the supernatural, we have the supernatural life but it is not sustained. So what sustains it is what? Word and prayer. What did I say? So if you want, so it's not just only explain the supernatural life just once, or maybe when we're having this teaching. To, for it to be something that we experience all through our lifetime, it will be sustained by what? Prayer and the word. And so we see them. So even, but also the issue of, that came up about the people of serving the tables, even in the assembly, they did not just appoint it to people that went to business school or management school. They still know that those things also still need to be manned by the spirits. Why did I say? So even so, hello, hello. Even the natural aspect of the supernatural church still needed to be manned by what spirits. So you see that. So and you see therefore, seek from among you several men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, who we may appoint over this word business. Verse, so, of course, let's, and, they, and the same pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man, what? Full of faith. And what? The Holy Spirit. So, you will see, so Philip, Stephen, was one of the disciples that all the activity, you know, I don't know how many years it was between Acts chapter 2 to Acts, after 78 years, yes, to chapter 6, had raised the man. Continue, can you see it? Continuing in the apostles' doctrine, in the fellowship, in the breaking of bread, you know, and daily pray at rest a man that was what? Full of faith. And what? The Holy Spirit. And we will see it. Give me, there's still another verse just um, down there, still describing, um, still describing Stephen. Let's verse 8. And Stephen, full of what? Faith and what? Power. Did what? You know that initially it was only the apostles that was doing signs. You see that, and God, that the apostles preached and then signs and wonders, they don't do all this. But by the time they had grown them, they had been groomed in the, in the in continuous steadfast in the world, they had come to chapter 6 to have a man full of faith and power. Who could also do what great what wonders and signs among the people? Verse 9. Then there arose some from what is called the synagogue of the freedmen. And also um, Syrians, Alexandrians, and those from Cilicia and Asia, disputing with Stephen. 
And they were not able to resist what? Yeah. So remember this same thing happened to Peter. So they had grown, people had grown by just, I'm just telling you that, you see, if we follow, if we continue growth, we will definitely attain growth. Amen. Growth is tied to continuing. Say continuing. continuing. That is what growth is tied. Continuing in the right things. Apostles' doctrine. Fellowship of the brethren. In the word and in the prayer. And they were not able to resist him. I want us to... and um, the, Verse 11... And, and they, they then secretly induced the men. Say, we have heard him speak blasphemous word against Moses and God and blah, blah, blah. And of course, they began to, they stirred up people because of time. They stirred up people against him. But let's go to verse 15. Let's go to verse 14. Then we go to Acts 6 now. Verse 14. For we have heard... For we have heard him say, so they were saying the things he did. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs which Moses delivered to us. Verse 15. And all who sat, looking steadfastly at him, saw his face as the face of what? His countenance. Say supernatural life. So this was the man he raised. Then the high priest said, at this chapter seven, at this thing so, and he said, and so they just gave him a free mic to preach. And he started from verse two of that heart. And he said, Brethren and fathers, listen, the God of glory appeared to us. So he started from Genesis. And he preached a message until from verse two. If you see that scripture, it's one of the longest scripture chapter in Acts. He preached from verse two until he got to verse 53. Say Stephen. Say full of the Spirit. So he had grown. He had come to that full stature. Those are Holy Ghost men. This was not Christ though. No, it was when, Peter, it was when Paul came that, that the body revelation of Christ. This was just basic principle. This was just Jesus. This is how you can call it Jesus boys. The name of Jesus raised this kind of man. Said, verse, so when he, he preached to a point, you know, when I read this, I said, oh, God. He preached to a point when they got to verse. So when they heard these things, they were caught to the heart. And they gnashed that thing with their teeth. As in the thing, it's the one that came me around. But let's see what verse 55. But he... Be full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Verse 56. And he said, look, I see, no, that was, look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Verse 57. Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their eyes and not at him with one accord. They attacked him. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. So they see the early faces of the church. Verse, and they stoned Stephen as, and, as he was calling on God. and say, So they were stoning him and he did not stop. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down. I, want you to, I just want you to see something. This was one of the things that touched. This was this that touched me most. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he, they did not say he died. He fell asleep. Believers sleep, they don't die. So in the midst of, you know what it means to stone people? You know, the you know, that's why all this, see, that's why I tell people, see all this Christianity of my enemy fall down and die. It's not pure, it's not sincere milk. It is not sincere milk. You will see, see what sincere milk raised. In the peak of his pain, he was still blessing 
his enemies. No, you know that that was one of the teachings of Jesus in the Beatitudes. So, I, you know that Jesus sat and he, he took his disciples to the mountain. They said, and he sat and he began to teach. You know, Jesus raised from those, from those people, he raised disciples. Peter, all of them, they were first disciples of Jesus. Before they became apostles, he taught them. I know that the apostles, I believe that, you see, I'm sure that part of those apostles' doctrine have been the Beatitudes. Because the things that Jesus taught them were the things that they began to teach them. So, I'm sure that why he could say this, he had been taught. Say he had been taught. So, say, say, so let, let's start from, let me, let, let's just start from the Beatitude. Let me show you so that I can know that it is part, you know, the Beatitude, when you say Beatitude, many times we talk about blessed and blessed, blessed, but this is also a part of the Beatitudes. And seeing the multitudes, he went up. So, God is not always particular, but multitudes are good though. His first announcement to gather. Then from there, God, but what God really wants to do is to raise what? Disciples. So that, that's what I want, I want you to know. You see, one of the things sincere meek we do, a sincere meek we do is that it will raise you a disciple. So if you are someone that does not, you know what disciple means? It is from the word discipline. So one of the things that the meek of the world will do, the meek of the world also have a level of discipline attached to it. There's a kind of discipline. So I tell people, church is a place where they discipline people. So you see people, so I tell people, you see people that they get hungry, maybe a word of righteousness, they get hungry, go and check their milk. One well, were discipled. If you have been discipled with the milk, what the discipline in the word of righteousness, you'll be able to receive it. It will not be, it will not be, it will not be grievous to you because of uh, part of church is to be disciplined. You know, a, a church that does not want discipline cannot be a supernatural church. Because decide, the, the people that enjoy, the, that, that really have the, the part, not like, but they said the life is natural. Part of that life is a disciplined life. Disciplined by the word. Disciplined by the prayer. Disciplined by fellowship of prayer. And so when you talk about fellowship of prayer, fellowship of prayer is not, ah, oh, sister Maka, I love your hair. Oh, fine, fine, yeah. Part of the fellowship of the brethren is when brethren puts you in order. Mm. Why did I say? So when you come and you talk about the fellowship, and, say, ah, and they broke bread from us to us. So I go to Samaka's house. Samaka's puts spaghetti for me today. Then I go to Sister Toyton's house tomorrow. She gives me jollof rice. And so if the next I come to her house now, she not say, ah, ah, is that the love of the bread? Hey. It's good to eat. But you see, part of the things you will also eat, eh? you will also eat, is to chop just correction. You rebuke one another. It's part of the fellowship. So you should tell you, you should look at your fellowship. So one of the things I want you to do is to look at the people you fellowship with. You look at one fellowship, okay, fellowship, because discipline men won't say fellowship. So if somebody say, ah, you're my friend, Samaka, you're my friend, you're my sister, you, have, you go and check, you assess that relationship. Is there discipline in that fellowship? Is there correction in that fellowship? Or is it just only, oh, my sister, oh, you are blessed. That's the only fellowship. Or just only sister that you attach with the name. Those are the only fellowship you have. Oh, sister Faith. Oh, sister Cynthia. Oh, sister Tokpe. Oh, brother, brother Theophilus. Oh, that's the place. That's the only place. It's just in the fellowship of the name. That's how the fellowship finishes. There is no discipline there. So part of that fellowship of the brethren they were talking about is being, being involved in each other's daily life. What did I say? Being involved in each other's steady life. So to marry a tone, J, Jaku J. I see you listening to one message that no can can finish you. I can I have the, the right to query you. Making the call to what are you listening to? I just said it's my life. No, it is not your life, it is our life. Say supernatural life. So you will see Jesus in that Matthew 5. He had started. He, he, he saw the multitude. You know, he did the miracle. And all of them came. After fish and bread. A lot of them came. Then he knew that uh, the multitude, they cannot pay the price. You know, he now took the thing up. He went up on the mountain. And when he was seated, who, did, who came to him? Our multitude, 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 our multitude
the multitudes will never be able to pay the price. And that's one of the things that continuing the doctrine does. You see, continuing the doctrine is about one on one multitude behavior. The make of the world will take it away. It will streamline you. It will discipline you. When they, when, they, when they were complaining about some people, they were not distributing the food well. And they said they should anoint some, some people to be doing it. What did you think they were doing? They would say some people, no, because this one, they have a problem that some people. Why do you think they have a problem? In that chapter, say human, human nature. So that, that's why it also makes you know that the milk, yes, so now listen, that's why it makes you know that the milk cannot deal with human nature alone. There is a limit. Because you see that that church, as supernatural as they were, hello, as supernatural as that church were, there were still some, some things that were still there that it would take another higher level of meal, of word to deal with. So you will see that, but that was why the, the disciples were not, they were not distracted. They did not say, okay, so henceforth now we now need to see how we will settle the fight between the Hellenists and the um, and the Jewish people. Okay, so tomorrow when we have a meeting, so in that meeting, that's, they knew that it was going to be a distraction because the real treatment for that thing is still the word and prayer. Of course, they were tend to eat so that you borrow need that rule. But they know that ultimately, what we deal with it is what the word and prayer. As they grow, that those things we read, but of course, they still made provision for it. So they created something temporary. That's why we have SLTs. So there are certain things that should not even be getting to pastor. That by SLT levels, unity that's level, they should be addressing it. So in your command, you know, it's not my duty to call the person and say, Sister, the clothes you are wearing is showing my tongue, is membrane. Don't wear it to show she again. People in that person's house. So if the people in that house, when he's leaving church, they did not see, maybe all of them too, they're not seeing where. If all of them did not see, by the time the person comes to church and is in a unit, people in that person's unit should have seen and call that person, ah, Sister, membrane level of church. Hello, wash your giddy. To cover your nakedness. And you shouldn't feel bad. Say, you shouldn't feel bad. Should and say, what is that? Did you buy clothes for me? You are not a disciple. Yeah. You are not a disciple. It is multitudes that behave that way. Because some of us still behave like multitudes. The church is a discipline. The church is supposed to be what? A disciplined place. Why did I say? So, so, they, so, those disciples, so by this, so they have to even raise spiritual, you know, supernatural men, people that were full of the spirit, to even attend to all those natural things. So even in church, even though we know that our focus is the main thing, there are still some natural things that we will still need to. One sister did not greet another sister. One, one, she married And they are preaching the word though in that church, and they are still malicious. Yes, yes, that's why they are in church. To be treated, but before they get treated and they get where we will make provision for it. some people, some deacons will do what look into it. Okay, in your house, so what is causing fine? Yes, me, I dropped 20,000. She she drops 5,000, but when she collects extra money, she uses it to she, on Sunday church. You will see her buy meat pie, she will buy coke, she will buy um chin chin, and she will say she does not have money. And then she went and she's the one that we even finish all the food in the house. Then the SLT or you need to have sit down and say, sit down. So how much do you collect? They give me, if I don't, I'm not working. They give me only 5,000 naira. Okay, that 5,000 naira, when you collect, it's not meant for meat pie and coke and sausage. Eh? Even that little, eh? it's more blessed to give. Then they will teach you. Then they will start monitoring. Say, eh, it's not easy. So then for, next week, the SLT will come and ask again. Eh, eh, she, we have sorted out that issue. They said, oh, he has not changed though. The SLT will call the person. Hey, what I spoke to you last week. How far? Hey, I'm trying. Uh, it's not easy. The person will encourage you. That one is not the work of pastor. Say, that's not the work of I believe that those, so those apostles, so, active, so the, the multitudes, so the way Jesus did was that they just want to raise disciples. So what we want to raise is not the number. It won't be number. 
But we want, we want to convert the number to what? Disciples. So sometimes you say, oh, they are to that church. When I first came, oh, they used to be very nice to me, everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, welcome service in here. <laughs> but after a while, you have to convert it from multitude to what? Disciples. <laughs> you need to be disciplined. So initially, when you come, they say, oh, sister, sister, what happened? Transition. Transition. They know that you have become what? Jesus, it's a making process. It's a making process. It's a making process. I cannot make you from afar. I can't make you when you are distant. I can't make you when you are distant. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. Shift from where you are. You are far. You are too far away. I can't make you there. I can't make you there. Come close. Come in. Come in where the making is taking place. Come in into the chamber where making is taking place. Come in. Come in. Come in. Have more trust. Have more faith. Come inside. Come inside. Open yourself up for making. Open yourself up for making. It's disciples that I make. He said, follow me and I will make you. It's disciples that I make. Not multitude. Not multitude. Oh, shift from multitude into disciple for your making, for your making. It's for your good. It's for your good. It's for your making. The church is put in place for making. It's for making. It's for so make your make up your mind. Make up your mind. Make up your mind and draw near. Draw near. Come close. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Come closer. Come closer. Have faith. Come closer. Come closer for making process. It will be easier that way. It will be faster that way. Oh, you can't be at that distance and be praying. I want to grow. I want to grow. You will not grow that way. Come closer. Stay with people. Stay with brethren. Mix up. Open up and be sincere. Then your making will be fast. See the Lord. Amen. So it's his disciples that are made. Say his disciples that are made. So you read, so just to round up, you know. So you see in um, Matthew, he went up on a mountain. And when, that was Jesus, when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Verse 2. Let's quickly read. Then he opened his mouth and did what taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed, 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 blessed. Then to that place where I was going. Verse, um, pray for those that. But I said to you, Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully, spitefully use you and what? Persecute you. Can you let this with what Stephen did? He prayed for those that were what? Persecuting. So I believe, I know Peter was in this teaching. Was in this teaching class. That's why I should not be teaching class. So that when disciples come to you and it's time to transfer to them, you will not know what to teach them. So, Peter had been taught this 
and so they have become a church. And I believe that when they were raising those disciples of whom Stephen was, they actually taught them all these things. And that was why in the midst, being full of the Spirit, they had continued steadfastly in their apostolic doctrine. They have continued in fellowship. They have continued in prayer. And they have come to a place where it was full of the Spirit and power. And so in the midst of this situation, he was able to bring out the right attitude. What did I say? The, a righteous attitude to the situation that was confronting him. And this is what I call a supernatural life. Can we rise up on our feet this morning and ask God for grace? One prayer I want you to pray to God this morning is to ask for God grace to continue. You see, grace to do what? To continue, and not just continue, or to continue daily and what? Steadfastly. Can you make that your prayer this morning? Let's, let's pray. Let's pray and allow, allow the Lord to uh, let the word strengthen in our hearts this morning. Father, we receive energies of the Spirit. Please pray for yourself. Pray, pray. Use those words that you received um, from, from God's hand made in to pray and ask the Lord to help your heart. Father, we receive grace. We receive every word you spoke to us this morning we we'll receive training of the spirit we we'll receive life of the spirit we we'll receive grace to make adjustments in the areas where we need to make adjustments by the holy spirit we say we are energized to walk in the spirit to live out the supernatural life every day we we'll receive grace to make it daily daily portions of the spirit daily attending to growth daily transformation daily culturing of the spirit daily life of faith the life of love daily a daily walk in the spirit is a daily one Lord, we receive grace by your spirit. 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 Lord, I repent in areas of great limitation and faults. I change. I receive grace for changing. Total transformation. Total transformation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we begin to thank the Lord this morning? Father, we thank you for the supply of your spirit through the word. We thank you because you are making changes. We we'll give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' most majestic name, we are prayed. And the people of God says, Amen. Can you have your seat? Can you appreciate Pastor Fisayo, Mommy? You can do better than that. Thank you, sweetheart. Um, thank you. Even exceeded what I initially thought. Um, that was a very... You exceeded what I thought you could do this morning. You just did a very good job. I think the uh, all mark of that is to draw us back to the Book of Hearts. Um, I think I always you know, tell the pastors that the, the Book of Hearts is... It's a move of the Holy Ghost in the first century church. Um, and it gives us an overview of how the Lord began to lead the churches. It's important for us to get our standard from Scripture. I always say this. And I want to say this also as a means of re-emphasizing it. Our standard is still Scripture. Can we say amen? amen? We should draw our patterns for building from Scripture. I say this because at times we check patterns from here and there. Yes, we can. We pick patterns from here amidst ourselves, amidst, amidst the church, amidst, you know, fellow brother, sister ministries. But ultimately, this is where the standard is. Because everybody is still changing. There are things that um, you know, here and there that we can pick from each other in the body. But ultimately, we have to draw a point of reference from here. I'm saying this so that we should know that at times when we say something that is not common around, and it's in scripture, you know that it is right. Uh, it is right because it is in scripture. 
Our script, the scripture is a point of reference. Now, why I'm saying this is that we now know, you know, because I remember those times when we began building, in the times of transition when the word began to come, I'd always knew that there was something about um, the, the, our building process that was not thorough. So you will know, For some of you can bear witness, I say this by the grace and mercy of God. When we started church, I want to preach, you know, I want to cover the basics. If I, in those days, I remember we used to do ATS in the morning, I would teach, I would teach on the basics. I was looking, because I felt that, you know, um, that many of us were not yet grounded in the basics. And so I felt that, okay, at a particular time, I felt that, okay, she, she, we should have moved away from it. So maybe we should not place emphasis on it. So I'll try to do that. Then later, after I, I do that, I'll check again. I'll find out that, no, 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 no. I kept having check in my spirit that that work was supposed to be a consistent work. Uh, and one of the things that the Lord told me was that, because you always have believers regularly come at different levels, and you must have meals for them. I, 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 remember, I remember the Lord was telling me that, you know, and I noted that down. I felt that maybe once in a while, I didn't do it too well, but now it has gotten stronger and stronger, and you know, the maturity and the sense has gotten stronger. Can we say amen? amen. Now, this is my point. So, we, the fact that we're a church emphasizing on the doctrine of Christ, and we are preaching perfection and fullness, um, every of the meals has their place in the church. And they should have their meal. I mean, I'm coming to see this over and over again. Now, look at it in all sincerity. When you check your own supernatural life with the one you are reading, do you see that there's an issue? Now, for you not to not be claiming, you know, I'm saying, I am I. You know you're a fool. You should be a fool somewhere. It means you are not sincere. Uh, doctrine should not make us insincere. It means that we know that we are lacking somewhere. And when we are lacking somewhere, it's only humility that makes us acknowledge that there's something that I have not got it. That's number one. Number two, I also found out that, you know, uh, in maturing, um, I think I said this before some years ago when we were looking around the subject, that it will take some everlasting sense to see all the lines, yeah. even in milk. Yeah. So all the lines in milk as in terms of experience, has not been fully restored. The full restoration plan of God, you know, because I've been teaching on restoration of all things, it also includes restoring experiences that were, it should be part of our building. Amen. When I mean experiences, not that you can know a word theoretically. Now, when I'm talking about knowledge, I'm not talking about knowledge in terms of just having knowledge informationally. I'm talking about having an experiential knowledge. So what we see in the churches was the fact that God really rubbed on them. I mean, in the book of Acts, they had, uh, they had an encounter with the revelation of the name of Jesus at the level of the Holy Ghost. And it was real. It was palpable. You know, now, mommy had taught us today greatly about the supernatural life. I want to tell you that gifts of the Spirit is also natural. It's also supernatural. I need to let you know. Uh, gifts of the Spirit are not spectacular. They are, they, are, they are supernatural. They can demonstrate themselves spectacularly. Yes, and I can tell you, what I'm just talking all the gifts of the Spirit, they should be natural and they should be in our midst. Amen. Naturally in our midst. The way the Lord taught me about gifts of the Spirit is that, and some of us operate them, it's just that at times you don't know that we are operating them. For instance, for me, I walk regularly in word of wisdom and word of knowledge. Regularly. Word of wisdom and word of knowledge, eh? finds expression through my message naturally. So I don't need to say, dear, 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 dear the Lord and all that. If you listen to my messages very well, eh, you see word of wisdom, word of knowledge, eh, and then prophecy regularly. Regularly. So you find out that gifts of the Spirit should be natural at work, talking to your colleagues. Eh, you should, gifts should be flowing and it's as if they are naturally finding expression. I like the example my wife used that when your children start doing some things, you don't start blowing trumpet. That's how it says the gift of the spirit. You know, today when a believer eh, gives word of knowledge or heals the sick, it's like a big thing. And then you become apostle overnight. What rubbish. Eh? What rubbish. Eh? Ananias, the disciple, was able to hear God. Eh? Today, that kind of person can build a ministry around it. We just make supernatural life a big deal. And then we now make it... So, so imagine Ananias having that kind of testimony. 
And the fact that God told him to go and lay hands on Paul. I did not know the place. And God led him by the spirit supernaturally. Look at that. That you are supposed to go to somewhere in Bodija and you don't know the place. And the Holy Ghost leads you there. Yeah. And then you went there, you did what God said. And you come back to your normal life. You don't go and start ministry the second day. Now, you are, you are not a brother again. You become an apostle. Yeah. Even amidst your brethren, they, when they hear that, they say, Ah! Oh, she's a brother more. <laughs> Shall you see that there is a problem with our Christianity? Yes. Ah, you are not a brother again. Ah, no, how can a brother do that kind of thing? But those are things that brethren do. These are brethren in the Holy Ghost. Can we all say amen? amen. So that is, that is, this is a major point of burden for me as a pastor. Because I want the church, I want us to be holistic. I want us to be well-rounded. I don't want us to have knowledge of supernatural life and not have supernatural life as experience. Huh? I don't want us to have knowledge of supernatural. And for many of us, we have not yet become supernatural. I know what I'm saying. Like, thank God for mommy giving us the lines. What she did this morning was to give us some of the lines of supernatural life. We are not yet. And as she was saying, the Lord reminded me again that we need to put all the lines in place. If not, they will, people will not grow up well. So we'll find out that even though we're emphasizing Christ and everlasting life, which we should do consistently, we'll not get the full fruits from it. We'll not be able to harvest men fully into Christ. They will be struggling. We will not be able to harvest men fully into divine life. So the Lord was now reminding me that, okay. So I was looking at it, okay, God. Um, because um, historically, it took about 8 to 10 years to get that product. What we are seeing in Acts chapter 7, all of us are excited. It took 8 to 10 years of daily teaching. So, now, so, so I was number one, I was comforted. I found out that we have not even given that much in terms of investment. Number one, um, our, the society will fight that today. Even right now, the number of meetings we are having, eh, when some people hear it from outside, they feel we are overzealous. That, uh, Pastor Dimitri is not sensitive. He's not considering other things. I'm telling you that you see the kind of church that, that, that was raised in the first century church. With this mind, you, can, you will run away from church. Because they meant daily in the temple and they meant from house to house. So as you are, they meant daily in the temple. So, and they're all of them, you know, of course, you know, most of them were marketplace believers. I think, you know, um, well, we'll get there. We'll gradually get into those areas. They were all in the marketplace. So they were all in, so, you know, you know the way the work society was structured that, that in that time is not the way it is now. Okay? The way work is structured today fights some of this supernatural life. It fights it. It makes it difficult. Eh? It makes it difficult. And, and, and those things are designed from the world system to stop the church. And that's one of the things that God will restore in the church. Eh? We will have supernatural work. Amen. Our own work. Our own structures. Designed by the Spirit. Amen. That will accommodate for our own work with God. We need it. Many of you need to, do, 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 so those are the kind of things. We have to learn it to beat the limitation of the world system. The world system will make it so difficult that there are certain things you cannot, yeah. it's not permit, it doesn't permit certain things. Uh, but God will grant us wisdom. Amen. We need wisdom for that. It's just, you know, we'll, some of this wisdom will grow into it. Amen. Just like it's not easy to really combat certain systems in the world. It's not easy to combat them. Even if you know that it is wrong, it doesn't mean you can change it. Yeah. It takes some wisdom yes, to deal with it, and it takes growth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I know there are many things that we need to address. Okay, so I'm just letting you know that we have just begun. Uh, if these guys met every day for eight to ten years, and they now had Stephen, they had Philip, know that we have not started. Uh, that we still have a lot to cover on. Okay, um, the Lord will be able to give us such churches that will have this kind of wine skin. We, we need such. So what we want to try, and we are gradually getting there. Uh, we are trying to have a cupping at every platform. A cupping at the General Assembly level, which is the, this, this kind of meeting. A cupping at KCC level. A cupping at household level. Okay? Where there is something is happening at each level. The Lord is, you know, is walking in our midst. Can we say amen? amen. 
Okay, finally, I think let me add this to what mommy said. Um, and, I'm, and I think, you know, one of the, my concerns for us is our daily impute in spiritual life. Yeah. Our daily impute. I found out that many of us, and that's our problem, we come for meetings, okay, maybe as per routine. Or maybe, of course, you live with brethren, you don't have choice, you can't sleep at home. I mean, if you are living with any brethren, you can't sleep at home. And bear me witness, there are many times you don't feel like coming. But you don't have choice. And it's that mentality of don't feel like coming that still brings you. And that's the attitude that you still have. So you can come uh, with like, but you are not come. Because you don't feel like coming. And because you are like that, so you, can, you are struggling. You can stay. Now, so much has not been done in six months. Because it's like you, you, have, a, you have entered one chance. Left to you. If you were not, maybe closely monitor. You know some of you, you can't leave church for a long time and I will not call you. I may not call you. One of the pastors will call you. I have not seen you. If, you. if you are not in church and we don't call you, it means that we consider you as an outsider. That is what it means. That we don't see you. It means that we consider you. I'm thinking that maybe you have not really seen me as your pastor. You are just testing the ground. That is how I see. If nobody calls you, you, are, you, are, you, you, didn't, you didn't come to church for a month and nobody calls you. It means that you are a son. Is it that you are a son of God? That you are coming to behold our order? Or we are just, we are just watching you from afar? Uh, or if it's someone that maybe you have been part of church before and then you took that stand, it means we have left you. And that's not good. That's not too good for you. It means um, some spirits will fight you and we cannot do anything about it. Yes, sir. And let me tell you, there are spirits that will find you that you know not how to deal with. Yes, to take the authority of the, of the church eh, to fight those things because you don't even know how you even got... You know, you fight some spirits that you don't know. You don't know the origin eh, of, of the warfare. But it was some of the actions that you did that just brought you into, into open and start fighting some wicked spirits. So, this is my, this is my, my stake. Please, let us work on investing in spiritual life every day. It's a daily thing. You have to be committed to spiritual life every day. Okay? Now, why I'm saying this is that in most times you will not feel like it. We don't live by feeling. Amen. Can you tell that? Preach that to your neighbor. We don't live by feeling. Okay? Uh -huh. now, you, I don't eat because I feel like some of you say, I don't feel hungry. That's why if you continue like that, you can die. We are supposed to eat because you have to eat. It's a need for the body. The body needs energy to run. So uh, I don't need to feel like, I don't pray because I feel like praying. I don't come to meeting of the church because I feel like coming. I don't live by my feeling anymore. If I should live by my feeling, I will not be preached. I will not be preaching. Most of the time you see me preach, I don't feel like preaching. Nobody feels like preaching. Eh? I preach powerful messages in my life that I preached it by faith. Everything in my body was saying, don't preach. You know, just tell the pastors. And of course, I've tried. I've, I've, I've also labored. I've raised men. Okay? Just tell them that you want to rest today. Eh? So it's not only you that feel that way. And, and I'll tell my body that I am still young. I've not reached the time where I should be sending such messages. That Kumu is 82 is still preaching. So I carry myself eh, and tell my body, you will answer me. I will not answer you. So I come to church. That's how I come to church. At times I tell my ah, I don't feel like doing anything no, today. I, I just said that, but I'm going to live opposite that. So you don't pray because you, have, you feel like praying. Eh? You don't fast because you feel like fasting. Eh? You don't hear message because you feel like hearing message. Eh? You, don't, you don't do anything because you feel like. You do it because you have to do it. You literally live on that. It's a daily investment. When you do that for a while, it's not going to be difficult to, to hear God. For instance, I mean, one of the, my best times of hearing God is when I'm praying. My heavens are open. I get clarity. I get direction. Okay? 
You know, when we, when we were getting, wanted to know direction for the land that we'll buy, it was that place. Yeah. That was where the Lord was sending my heart to. Anytime I pray, I'll just be seeing that area. I told the people looking for land, start looking at this area. It was during prayer time. So there are many conflicts in my life. There are many clarity in direction. Things, direction for this house, direction for my life, direction for family that I got when I was praying. So imagine if you don't pray. Uh, you don't pray regularly. Direction will not come. So you have to daily invest, okay? Make it a, it's better you pray 15 minutes every day than praying two, five, ten hours in a day and you are waiting till next week. Spiritual things don't work that way. Yeah. It's better. It's a little here, a little there. Eh? Do it daily. Eh? I think they taught us one song. The three things I day by day. Dear Lord, three things I pray to see you more clearly, love you more dearly, follow you more near day by they didn't say months by months. They didn't say week by week. It's what day by day. The Lord will help us. I, I, while we were ministering, while my wife was ministering this morning, I was just thanking the Lord. I said, God, you have really helped us. So. Because having to look into these areas is just God's mercy. So if you can just be consistent. Another thing, it's good to be consistent. Listen to this. I'll round up here. It's good to be consistent with an assembly. Stop jumping church. If you jump church, you will not get some things. Except you are led. Uh, what I believe God will do is that God can do transplanting. It is God. It's not even you. Some of us, this is our mindset. You think, even within the waters, you don't have a right to jump family. Even within the waters. You can go and plant yourself in NWC, and heaven did not plant you there. You will struggle. Even though there is grace there. Because God didn't lead you there. You led yourself. Because I need to don't so let heaven be the one to lead you. Amen. Because leading of the spirit enters into those areas. Because some of us just think you can jump church. Because now you have an agenda, you have a plan. So you now plan it in. If you do like that, you're only giving yourself eh, you are you are making it difficult for the Lord. Yeah. God has plan for you. Eh? God has plan for you, God has purposes for you. So don't don't remove yourself and replant yourself by yourself. In fact, it is, doesn't happen that way. Have you seen a tree that removed himself and went to plant himself somewhere? It is the, it is the Lord Jesus that does such things. He, he can, he can, he, they, I call it transplanting. Some people, when they uproot themselves like that, they don't get planted anymore. They're just, they're, and we have many believers like that. They're all running around the body. You cannot be supernatural, talkless of being what? Spiritual. The Lord will have the Lord will show us mercy Amen. in this area. Amen. Can we just greet one another and welcome them to church? If you are fellowshiping us for the first time, you can wave your hands and let's greet you. And you don't want to stay after this first service. You can wave your hands. We still have another one. Uh, but you can still wave your hands if you your first time in church. Can we stand to our feet and welcome one another? I've not seen any hand up. Welcome one another. 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 God bless you.